the idea around it was that um, people could join physically um, in a kind of disclosed uh, location which was meant to be secretive and and underground although it wasn't literally <laughs> the idea was that people would then have to come off grid as a way of participating in the class so that it was meant to be a, a hidden secretive kind of fight club kind of thing <laughs> They would have to disconnect, as it were, from tracking. And so that made the class even more secretive and a bit more kind of, I don't know, interesting, I guess, was the idea. Some of the things that we talk about, you know, like tracking technologies, cookies, and, you know, people cover their webcams, you know, for cybersecurity reasons. And what better way to talk about those things is if we actually have to try and undo them as much as possible. I sent them initially sort of very cryptic invitation to say, would you be interested in joining a, an underground class that we're going to talk about privacy? So I wanted to make it as as sort of as a, a more of a game as possible. I did, had actually read something similar in Dragnet Nation by Julia Angwin. And I was like, mm, I wonder if I could make that work. And unfortunately I did. <laughs> so I sent everybody um, a cryptic message about where, where we were going to meet. Um, because at that time, I know that Google was, you know, searching for keywords in, in email. So I didn't want that to come up as, you know, I didn't want to fail before anybody even meet. Um, because the, the aim was that the location would be hidden. I mean, there's so many other things, obviously using Twitter and other things, there are trackers, but I wanted to try and keep the location itself as the thing that we were trying to protect. The first step was I wanted them to download the Tor browser. Tor literally stands for the Onion Router, right? It is an implementation of Onion Routing. In the institution that I was working at the time, you couldn't download it because <laughs> because the network wouldn't let you. So you have to go home and, and you have to download it there. But So they would download the Tor browser, then they would go onto my website um, where I had preloaded um, some clips I wanted them to be looking at in, in the class, find the video that was, you know, video one, buff it into their browser so that um, we could save on bandwidth once they arrived. Then they'd have to open another tab, log into Twitter, because then they would probably go through its security kind of procedure. So then people would have to log into Twitter. So that was all kind of set up. I then wanted them to start disconnecting. And so they would have to then close all of their um, programs or, or tabs, whatever they were using. Then they would turn off their Wi-Fi. They would turn off their Bluetooth if they had it connected on their computer. And then they would kind of like just close the lid and put it in the bag. Then I wanted them to look at all their other smart devices that they have. So whether that's a smartphone, smartwatch, whatever else they have. <laughs> And um, I asked them to go onto their location services, completely switch off location services, and then ask them to turn off Bluetooth, turn off Wi-Fi, and then finally put it into flight mode. Um, I wanted to do it kind of step by step so that they kind of would see, oh, there's all these different things of, why is she asking me to do that? Is there a reason for that? Is it, is, am I gonna be tracked in some way using Bluetooth? Am I gonna be tracked using Wi-Fi? I asked them to switch all that off before they started traveling because I didn't want there to be a certain drop off point where all of the people would just be switching off because that then would then trigger, okay, it's there. I purposely chose somewhere where I knew that you wouldn't get a Wi-Fi handshake. And there was only gonna be one network they can connect to, which is the one that I created through my mobile device through a VPN. So the idea was that they were connecting to Tor through a VPN <laughs> a private hotspot that I had created for them. In the first class, there was a point of failure, which was, which was kind of nice because it was a learning point. So what happened was that we were all there and we had the class and it was all you know, reasonably kind of uh, underground as it were. And then somebody else who wasn't, um, who did not follow the procedure arrived late because somebody must have measured them. So this person arrived and they tweeted saying, oh, at blah, 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 has just arrived at hashtag privacy UG. And I, <laughs> and I said, okay, so now we, now our location is, is compromised. And then people said, well, well, how? And I said, it's because of the network. So essentially you have tagged someone and saying that they have come to this location. If you just look at their, where their mobile is situated, because if they have their location GPS on, you can find to, you know, a very fine point where they are and thus where the rest of us are. So it was a really interesting kind of point to discuss on a technical kind of level. I would be interested in learning about other bits of how we can, un, I don't know, switch up other tracking elements to try and make it even more kind of underground, I suppose. But yeah, I think I'd be interested in sort of multi-sided, having other kind of advocates who'd like to, 
I don't know, to do, a, do one as well, I guess. One of the things that we were talking about was the lack of transparency from companies and from government, is that we don't know how, how accurate or how well these tracking things work and how, what we can do to you know, either take back control or, or if we're happy with them using that data, then letting them use it. But the feedback loops of, these, of the tracking technologies are so um, obfuscated we might, I mean, we do see on a regular basis, you know, personalised advertising for us. And that's probably the, the clearest feedback loop that we see of tracking technology. So if I went on Amazon and I was looking at, I don't know, a pencil case, and then suddenly that came up on my Facebook, I said, like, oh, okay, well, I know that's there because I was looking at that earlier. I might not understand how it got from there to there, but I can kind of see the link sort of thing. But there are lots of other things that could be done with that data. I mean, you know, recent um, news revelations with Cambridge Analytica is that we aren't sure of what the in-between bit and what then the end product might be. We live in a connected world and we like to be connected. We like to be connected with other people. Doesn't, we don't necessarily like to be connected with tracking technologies. I mean, there are, there are great ways that you can kind of mask things like you can mask your IP address using a VPN, for example. You can use the Tor browser if you wish, although that, that does bring some other issues. I mean, some websites can break and not really work very well kind of thing. And then you always ask for like security kind of questions and those sorts of things. Um, so there are things that you can, small things that you can do on a regular basis. Like I have a VPN on my phone, a VPN on my laptop, and I prefer to use that um, wherever possible. Some, some networks do block it, which is frustrating, um, but, I mean, I, I know that completely disconnecting is, is not really worthwhile for me, but I, I've come to a point where I'm educated enough, fortunately, that I can pick and choose. I mean, sometimes I do use Google Maps for, um, from, you know, searching or going somewhere, to, you know, using it as sat-nav, essentially. But at that point in time, I'd rather get from A to B in, a, in the most efficient way possible than be late and lost and... And just because I was like, well, I don't want Google to have that data. I mean, I might be mindful about where I start, start my, uh, my journey. I might actually pull away, pull off onto a lay-by yeah, a bit down the road because I know generally the direction I'd like to go in. But I mean, I have, I've come to a point where I understand that, but there's so many people that don't. I personally believe that this is a topic that other people should be kind of aware of and have an opinion of and, and also kind of have some, you know, tangible things that they can do, you know, well, if they want to protect themselves. But the whole idea of making it in this way is that it's kind of like a game that you're, although you know, we don't have anything, anything to hide, which is a debate I really hate. A good way to try and, and see if whether it worked is if somebody could come along and try and hack it and see whether they, they could find out where we were. So then we kind of actually have sort of like, sort of a baddie, so to speak, to kind of you know, hide away from. But again, it's not about, it's not necessarily about hiding, but it's, it's kind of testing the technology and seeing whether we do truly have the ability to kind of stop things from happening if we don't really want it to. Let's get this out of the way first. If your password is password, you probably want to close out of your browser right now and change it and, you know, hang your head a little bit. If it's any variation on the word password or has any of the numbers one, two, three, four in order in it, you need to delete those passwords, maybe delete your account out of shame.